So recently I was at Walt Disney World for several days and did something a little bit different. I experienced it from a scooter. <laughs> Disney is definitely a different experience on a scooter. And here's all the information, the who's, what's, when's, where's, why's, and all that if you're thinking about it as well. So on our recent trip to Disney World, I had to do it a little bit differently. Uh, I had to rent a scooter because uh, my health conditions I've had this issue kind of like asthma. It's nothing serious. It just makes it very hard for me to get around long distances and running out of breath easy. So so we thought, let's make this trip as easy as possible and let's rent a scooter for while we're there. And that way I've got it available and I can get around and I don't have to worry about wiping out and wearing out and exhausting myself. And everybody can have a better time that way. So we did a little bit of research into what and where and why uh, and we learned quite a bit. Now, you may be thinking, why did you rent a scooter? The parks have scooters available. And yes, every single theme park out there rents scooters for use in the park. They tend to be expensive. Disney is 50 a day, I believe. Uh, Bush Gardens, it was $80 a day for a scooter. Mm, we didn't get one there. <laughs> uh, the other problem with renting a scooter in the park is you can't leave the park with it. So when you're wanting to go from the park to your hotel and up to your room and all that, there's no scooters available if you use just the park rentals. The other problem is they often run out early in the morning. So if you're not there first thing and have one reserved, you're stuck if you need it. So we looked outside of the parks and there are actually a lot of companies that rent scooters that you can borrow and pick up or they will drop off and use them your whole time there. There's Buena Vista Rentals, there's Scooter King, there's Gateway, there's Gold Mobility, and there's a bunch of others. Now, all of them have different options for pickup and getting your scooter. Many of them can drop off at the resorts but you have to be there when they drop it off. They can't just leave it for you. Or you have to pick it up directly from them. They all have different costs. They all have different features. You can usually pay extra to get a basket on the front, a basket on the back, a cup holder, a canopy, and all these little things that you can add on, and they cost more. So there are options available. I actually ended up going with a company called Scooterbug. The reason I went with Scooterbug is it is the official scooter rental company of Disney. So unlike the others, they can drop off at the resorts and they can actually leave the scooter at Bell Services for you. You don't have to be there when they drop it off. You also don't have to be there when they pick it up. Again, you park it at Bell Services, you're done. It makes it very nice because most of the scooter companies want to drop off at, say, 1030 in the morning. I'm in the park at 1030. I don't want to have to leave the park and go back to my hotel and pick up the scooter. Or in our case, our first day, we were at Epcot. We drove straight there. We were there all day. It was wonderful to get to the resort and the scooter was there ready and waiting for me. Not necessarily possible with the other companies. Uh, Scooterbug also was about the cheapest out there and that was pretty impressive. So they've got the connections with the parks. They've got the connections with the resorts. And if you run into an issue in the park, they are the one company that can actually come into the park and help deal with it sometimes. I'm sure that others have ways of doing it, but they don't have the official connection. So we went with Scooterbuck, and overall I was pleased. It was a comfortable scooter. It got around. It had a great speed, especially after the slow crawling one at Epcot the first day. <laughs> All right, we are on the way to Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm trying not to run over people on my scooter. I am a mad demon on wheels. <laughs> Okay, and it's a very slow scooter. Hey, look, a speed bump! <laughs> so what did we do with it? Well, we picked it up. We drove it straight up into our hotel room. We parked it in the hotel room on the side, out of the way. And we plugged it in there and let it charge up overnight. Nice and out of the way. The nice thing with the Disney Resorts is they're actually big enough in the rooms that you can generally park your scooter in there and it's out of the way. So when you're getting around at the parks, when you go through security, going through on a scooter is a little different. You have to stop your scooter outside of the metal detector, get up, walk through, clear all of your stuff, and then you walk back around, then you drive your scooter through. That's assuming you can get up, get up out of your scooter. I don't know what they did for those who couldn't do that, 
but it was kind of almost like a double security thing. <laughs> It worked. Getting on the monorail was relatively easy. They would spot the scooter coming up. They would grab the ramp. They'd flag me down to where they wanted me to go. They dropped the ramp. I drive on. They picked the ramp up. Everybody else got on with me. Nice, quick, and easy. Really didn't take any extra time there. Uh, getting on the bus was a little different. Each bus can only hold two scooters at a time. So if you've got more than two in front of you, you're stuck waiting for the next one. It's also an interesting back and forth driving maneuvering, and it took me probably three or four bus rides before I finally got down how to drive it onto the bus and get it parked so they could lock it in. So buses were interesting and there was actually one time where there were enough scooters ahead of me for my hotel. I looked over the next spot and saw that there was only one scooter for the other hotel and I skipped and jumped over there and then took the monorail around because it was quicker. And then Skyliner, again, you can also drive it right up. They have a special car for it. So you would just drive it around and you drive it right on the Skyliner. I didn't take it on Skyliner because we just rode it from Epcot over to the hotel and back and thought, ah, we don't need to do this. So I actually parked my scooter in Epcot, walked down to the Skyliner, rode it, rode back, and then walked back and got my scooter again. <laughs> What's it like around the parks? Well, uh, let me show you some of my fun in the parks on the scooters. Um, and I'm on a scooter. <laughs> Getting old sucks. Okay. <laughs> Especially old with lung conditions and all this other crud. And I'm on it. They're laughing at me recording while driving. So, all right. So we are on the way out of Pandora, trying to make sure I don't run into people. Don't record in the box. <laughs> yeah, the box would be a bad thing to open. Photo pass is set up here. You want to do photo pass now or what after? Uh, exit? afterwards. Okay. Mike. I've gotten a few photos Trying taken on my magic run band people over. To transfer over like this is fun than a scooter, I get to run people over. <laughs> yeah, my bloopers on this are gonna be quite entertaining. I got people recording me. It's like an entourage, it's kind of scary. And I got people that are stopping in front of me. Hmm. Ankles. I see ankles. How much per ankle? Yes, one of the things you're going to be doing is dodging people. Um, I had a number of people that stepped in front, and the ongoing joke was, how many times can I hit them, and did they deserve it? I never did actually hit somebody. I was sorely tempted a couple times when people deliberately jumped in front of me, but I didn't do it. My wife, on the other hand, she actually got hit in the back of the ankle by somebody else pushing a wheelchair because they weren't paying attention. She was right behind me, hadn't moved, and they just rammed her. So, yeah. I, I, whoa, you didn't have to kick me. There we go. All right. So that's what happens when somebody who doesn't know how to drive a wheelchair drives a wheelchair into your ankles. Yeah. yeah. A lot of guests didn't seem to see the scooter. You're at a different height level, so they almost didn't seem to notice you. There were several times I was kind of stuck sitting there waiting for an opening in the crowds, where if I had been walking, I could have just charged in. And I had to wait till people actually stopped looking and went, oh, maybe we should let the scooter go. Um, so there were times I was actually slower waiting uh, than if I had been walking because I didn't want to ram people. There were times so. Pay attention if there's scooters around. <laughs> Getting the scooter on the ride, most rides and attractions, you actually took the scooter through the queue. I was actually a little surprised by that. There were a couple that I parked the scooter, like when we rode the people mover. I parked the scooter in the stroller area and I walked up. So if I had the option to walk in, I generally did. Uh, but there were several that they would see me coming up and I would start to park and like, no, 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 take it in, take it in. Small World, we actually ended up saving some of the weight because instead of going through the regular line, they actually sent me through the disability line. Okay, Small World. Special access line because I got a scooter, which I appreciate, not why we got it, but it does help. So we'll save a little bit of the weight. That was a little unusual. Usually you didn't save time, you went through the regular, but there were a couple times like that. So Megan just got her first ride on Seven Door, so did Brandon. So my input comes a little different because I'm on uh, this little thing. Um, and I've been in a few queues today, like Small World, you go through the queue. You do go through the queue in this one, but it's very narrow and tight turns. And 
This is probably the worst queue for driving a scooter through that they have me do. Um, if I'd known, I would have parked it outside somewhere, but I don't know where. Uh, the shows, Country Bears, put us right on the front row with a special seat. All right, so Country Bears, Take complete one. rookie, <laughs> near rookie. He's seen a couple clips online, but I've Megan seen, knows nothing. No, I've seen and we, are, and we are in the front row. Woohoo! I've never sat down here for this, so this will be kind of cool. Tough to be a bug. We got the back row. But because I had the scooter, we got special seating, and we oftentimes got to go in first. So Muppets, we were in early. That was actually kind of nice. It was the first time I had done that, and it, I thought it worked pretty well. I, I did enjoy that part. Uh, Frozen, we also got right up near the front. That was cool. <laughs> So it was kind of nice to get some of the extras. We never asked. We never expected anything. It was just as we were getting in line and we were approaching it, the cast members immediately saw the scooter and directed us. And I was very grateful for that. So it was kind of nice in that regard. We didn't use a disability access card. We wasn't going to do that. No reason to. We were just normal guests. I just happened to have wheels. Now, I did run into one issue with my scooter. Uh, it apparently hadn't charged overnight, one night, maybe two. Uh, and so my last day at the park, I was watching my battery charge just drop. I also had to call the scooter company that we're renting from because uh, it apparently didn't charge last night. And it's definitely slowly dying. <laughs> there was, part of the reason we rented from this company was because they can come into the park if there was any issues. Well, the response was, well, we can bring another one to your hotel. Doesn't do me any good if it dies in the park. <laughs> so, well, you can just leave it in the park then. Uh, so apparently, if and when it dies, I get to just abandon it here in the park and uh, long walk back to the hotel. That'll be very interesting. So, yeah, there's the problem is that if the scooter's at the hotel and I'm at the park, I can't use the scooter. So I kind of worked that scooter up until it was about dead and we were actually on our way out of the park. And this is one of the things I liked with Scooter Bug. I drove right up to the stroller and scooter rental at the park itself and said, Hey, this is a Scooter Bug chair. It's about dead on the battery. Can I leave it with you? And they said, Yes, we take care of Scooter Bug rentals. And so I left it right at the wheelchair rental at Hollywood Studios. They took care of it and I walked out. Oh my gosh, it was a long walk. I really could have used the scooter. But when there was a problem, Disney was able to help me with that one which they couldn't have with the others. So that was nice. And I actually ended up just leaving the other scooter at Bell Services because I was leaving at a ridiculous early morning hour the next day, so I didn't need it after that. Uh, the only flight I had available was at 5 a.m. So my uh, pickup is at 1.45 a.m. Uh, that's usually when I go to bed, not get up. So this is going to be a long night. So I never did pick it up again. They just picked it back up at Bell Services and we were done. That was kind of easy. So yeah, I definitely did like the fact that uh, because I was leaving, I literally left at two in the morning. Dropping off a scooter with other companies would not have worked at that point. So it was very nice to be able to leave the scooter with Bell Services, have them take care of it, and I could just worry about getting on my plane. Overall, I really liked having the scooter. It made the whole trip much better for me, uh, much more flexible. I was able to last a lot longer than what my current health condition would have allowed me to otherwise. Yeah, no, open to close right now for me. It stinks. Uh, but it was it was really nice that way. I, I do have a couple caveats. One, it's not for people who can't drive. If you can't slow down and avoid people, don't get a scooter, please. You're going to hit them and like my wife did. No, don't do that. <laughs> and then one other thing that was rather awkward at times is because you were at a different height level, for the most part, most people's waistlines were right here to me. Because uh, you're sitting as opposed to standing. And so your view sometimes is a little awkward, uh, especially when you have some people that don't know how to dress or walk appropriately and you're just kind of going, oh, come on. So be aware, if you are in a scooter, the sight line sometimes is just not the best. 
Uh, but other than that, it was really a, a wonderful benefit. Our scooter cost us probably about $30 less than if I had rented one in the parks every day and gave us a lot of opportunities to let me use it at the resorts and leave the parks with it that I couldn't have with a park rental. Uh, it was a better scooter than the ones in the park. And overall, um, if I have to do it again, I would very happily rent from Scooter Bug again and do the same thing. It really did help make it a great trip. So do you have more questions about scooters? I'd love to hear them. Let me know. Please share them in the comments below. Thank you so much, too, to my patrons for making this possible and to Craig especially for helping support that whole trip and the scooters and everything else. Craig said something about not wanting a dead willow on his hands. I don't know what. <laughs> <laughs> but i uh, very grateful for that. Be sure to check the description. There is a ton of information below there too about merchandise and fan sites and so much more. So be sure to check that. Thank you so incredibly much for watching. Hope this was fun and informative. Let me know what you think. I'd love to hear it. Thanks so much. God bless. Uh, yeah, it's a different experience. <laughs> We thought, let's make this trip as easy as possible, and let's go ahead and invest in a scooter for the week. It was easy getting on the monorail. You just drive up. The people, when you go through security, okay. Small World, we actually ended up skipping a little bit of the line because they had me drive um, up, and we they actually sent me... <laughs>